I'm Paul Huizinga for Power Auto Media. This is Daily Engineering. I've got Bill Daly with me. I gotta tell you, I've seen dry sump systems before, and this looks nothing like anything I've ever seen. How is this different? Well, what we make are billet oil pumps and billet oil pans that integrate together as one. We call it oil in, oil out. I try to get the oil out of this oil pan in one rotation of the crankshaft. I don't let the oil fling around and get caught up in the crank, which causes horsepower loss and heat rejection to go up. If you can do that, then you can create a tighter, shallower pan, and that's what we have here, which is a very tidy little package. The spur gear is the oil pressure pump. And that's what makes oil pressure to feed the motor, high pressurized oil, regulated. The spur gear is the best mechanism that we've found to create a consistent oil pressure curve that we like. Minimal cavitation based on RPM of the pumps. The root style rotors are little superchargers. They're what are used to scavenge the oil and air out of the motor. The key is we're scavenging exhaust blow-by gases, that's air. What this does is an air separator. We collect all the scavenge coming out of the back of the pump through the scavenge sections into the air separator. Foamy oil goes in, because that's what comes out of a motor. The air separator is a hydrodynamic centrifugal device. The centrifugal forces of the impeller force the foam outwards. It gets to the outer barrier, which there's already previous deaerated oil rotating around in a circle. What that does is creates a hydrodynamic wedge in that film. The foam comes along and tries to push against it, but the air being lighter than the, the hydrodynamic forces to get through the barrier, burp back down to the center, and then spit out the center of it and go back to the tank. So all of the blow-by from the motor exits through the air line. Only pure oil exits through the oil line, and so about 10% of foamy oil does also exit through the airline back to the tank. So they're both oil lines. They both go back to the oil tank, but they are truly separated from air and oil. Well, obviously you've got the, the Big East covered. You've got your small block Chevys, you've got your LS engines and things like that. How many different total applications do you have for uh, engine-specific pans? It's basically driven by the customers. We can do anything within the realm of reality. A lot of times, kids want stuff for their production cars. Hard to fit in a production car, so we focus more on racing, but we do have a lot of off-the-shelf production car kits that we work real hard at making fit. Okay, so let's say that I've got myself a SCAD V4, and I want you to make up an oil system for me. What's the best way to get in touch with you to see if we can make, uh, make that happen? Well, you can check out our website, give me a call, I'm always available, and we'll see if we can make some magic together. Well, I'm Paul Husinga for Power Auto Media. Thanks to Bill for bringing us down here. We'll catch you next time.